Dr. Christiana Haugen, consultant oncologist, has been approached by a research organization that is handling a phase one clinical trial of a novel drug for the treatment of acute small cell carcinoma of the lung for a multinational pharmaceutical company based in the U.S. The drug under evaluation will be tested in a small group of patients with late stage cancer and requires the investigator to draw regular quantities of blood amounting to no more than 800 milliliters in total over a two-week period so that a full range of hematological, biochemical, pharmacokinetic, and pharmacodynamic parameters can be assessed. The size of the tumor will also be measured. Dr. Haugen has background preclinical information concerning the drug from some publications she read several months ago and thinks the new drug being evaluated will be a breakthrough in the treatment of cancer. She is naturally very keen to be an investigator for the trial and duly submits an application to her hospital's EC for consideration. Dr. Haugen plans to become the investigator of a lung cancer phase one clinical trial. The trial requires her to draw regular quantities of blood, amounting to no more than 800 milliliters in total over a two-week period. The EC chair was surprised when he read the protocol, i.e., that as much as 800 milliliters of blood would be drawn from terminally ill cancer patients. Being a specialist in hematology, he knows that a normal blood donation of healthy individuals varies from 200 to 550 milliliters, depending on the country, and a full blood donation should in principle not be repeated over an eight-week period. The chair noted that the protocol had listed a well-known medical university in the United Kingdom as a potential trial site so he simply sent an email to the EC chair at that university and asked for comments on the protocol in question. It took just a few hours before the email replied. No, we did not accept the protocol since it is harmful and unethical to collect 800 milliliters in terminally ill patients. No gain, just pain for very sick participants. The EC chair could not disapprove the protocol since that can only be done during a full EC review meeting. Note, this scenario in fact represents a true case. Sponsors may assume that even if one EC does not accept a protocol, maybe another will. Consulting other ECs involved in the review of the same protocol is in fact good practice and should be encouraged.